What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to our channel. It's the Choose here from Choose to Explore, where we teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So we just came back from Nicaragua, and man, this is the sixth of seven countries in Central America, and we still have one more to visit. But I may be premature in saying this, but <laughs> this may be my favorite country in Central America. I can agree. So we spent a total of six days here in Nicaragua. And we really want to give a huge shout out to Jay and John, the bucket list travelers. They lived in Nicaragua for 18 months and they helped us really plan our trip to perfection. So especially with this limited amount of time, we wanted to see as much in the limited time we had. So shout out to you guys. So we have a lot of Nicaragua content coming up for you, but let's just get into our seven things that surprise us the most. So the first thing that surprised us was that Nicaragua is known as the land of lakes and volcanoes. So Nicaragua has over 20 volcanoes and it has the second most volcanoes in Central America behind Guatemala. So if you guys didn't see that vlog, please be sure to check that one out. And it also has the biggest lake in Central America, Lake Nicaragua. And Lake Nicaragua is so big, you can see it from many parts throughout the country. And Lake Nicaragua is super unique because it's the only place in the whole world where you can see freshwater sharks in their natural habitat. So in Nicaragua, the word that they use is tiberon, which I believe is a bullhead shark, but that's just what they call them. And while we did many things on the lake, we did not encounter any tiberon. <laughs> <laughs> so talking to our guide, what they told us is that people eat the sharks, but the sharks also eat the people. So be careful about that. <laughs> we did not mess with that. So that's a lake with a volcano in it, but there also is a volcano with a lake in it. So be sure to check out this concept with Nicaragua so you guys can see that as well. The second thing that is super unique and surprising about Nicaragua is you can actually volcano board on an active volcano. So we've been to a lot of places and I've never even heard of volcano boarding before going to Nicaragua. So volcano boarding sounds crazy, but what even is volcano boarding? So pretty much you have a board and you're sliding down the slope that formed on the volcano itself. So we actually did this on our first day in Nicaragua and it was a crazy experience. We actually did this on our first day. I mean, within four hours of being in the country, we went down an active volcano on a board. We did this on the Cerro Negro volcano, which is the youngest, but also the most active volcano in Nicaragua. This volcano actually just erupted in 1999. So I don't know who came up with the idea to go down the volcano with a board, but I'm happy because it was an amazing experience. So the tour company that we did it with actually gave us jumpsuits, gave us goggles, gave us the, the boards. We had to carry the equipment up the volcano and it gets very windy up there, but the views up top there are amazing and it's well worth it. And just so you know, when you're sliding down that volcano, you can end up reaching speeds of 100 kilometers an hour, so pretty fast. <laughs> be safe and be sure to put on the goggles, wear the bandana. We yes, bought the bandanas, right? Yes, the bandana, right? yes. Because the, the rocks, the rocks yeah. are coming at you from all different ways. You don't want to eat those, you don't want them <laughs> in your eyes, none of that. <laughs> Listen but, to your instructor. But it was an amazing experience. One of the reasons why we decided to come to Nicaragua. So the next thing that was surprising to us in Nicaragua are these flight prices. My gosh. So we were trying to go to Nicaragua for a long time, but being that we we're based in New York, those round trip tickets can commonly be around $800 a person. And that is not in our budget. That is not seeing the world and saving a dollar. No, it is not. So when we saw a flight for $286, we knew we had to get it. So going from $800 to under $300 per person is a huge saving. If you want to figure out how we find cheap flights all the time, be sure to download our guide below. I think because these flights are relatively expensive for Central America, it is a deterrent for people to travel into Nicaragua from America. But there are other alternatives. So many people will actually fly into another country nearby in Central America, such as Costa Rica, and then simply take a bus across to Nicaragua. If you guys haven't seen our Costa Rica vlog, please be sure to check that out as well. So Costa Rica also has another airport in Liberia, and you can take a three-hour bus shuttle from there all the way to San Juan del Cer in Nicaragua. So there are different options if you're on a budget, if you have time, or you just want to get there. So the next thing that surprised me is the amount of things and places to visit in Nicaragua. 
We only had six days there and we tried to do as much as we could, but you could very easily spend two weeks or a month or even 18 months like the bucket list travelers did and still not do everything. But we'll touch on the four main places that people visit when they're in Nicaragua. So the first place we're gonna to touch on is Granada. And if you're very short on time and can only pick one place in Nicaragua, it would most likely be here. This is because it's very central and there's a lot of things that are close by that you can get to from Granada. Here in Granada, they have a big expat community and you see a lot of people at coffee shops or just working on the computers all the way. And Granada is not too far away from the airport, only about an hour and a half or less. The next place that I'll talk about is San Juan del Sur. And this place is a completely different vibe from Granada and it's some place that we decided to skip out on. But this is where the backpackers and the young hostel goers are. If you want to have a good time, you want to party, you want to drink, this is the place you need to go to. <laughs> lots of beaches, lots of parties. But San Juan del Sur is also great because you have a beautiful views of the Pacific Ocean. The next place I'll talk about is Leon. So this also is about two hours away from the airport, but it's in the opposite direction of Granada. This place is an old historical city, and boy, does it get hot here. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but this place is really nice because they have this beautiful white church, and it's also where we went volcano boarding. So remember we were talking about the island formed by two volcanoes in the middle of the lake? Yes, that's so much heavy. So this place right here is a completely different vibe. It's nice, it's relaxing, and it has the most beautiful views that we saw in Nicaragua. If you guys have the time, I would highly recommend visiting here. It is a little bit more work because you need to take a ferry in the middle of the lake to get there, but it's well worth it. So the next thing that surprised us was how well connected the entire country was. So they have the best public transportation that we've experienced in Central America. So we traveled to four different cities, pretty much all through bus. But there are many different modes of transportation and it can be a little confusing. Shout out to the Bucket List Travelers because they helped us plan that and get to different places because it can get a little bit confusing, especially if you don't speak Spanish. But what's also amazing is that the public transportation was very inexpensive. A lot of rides were like $1, $2, some were under a dollar. I mean, sometimes you can opt for taxis, which are more expensive, or you could do like the shuttles, which um, are more private, but are more expensive. But just the public transportation and buses itself will get you almost anywhere you need to go. So the thing also with taxis are, they're not really private. So if you get in one and there's somebody in there, they'll still pick you up and you'll just be in an Uber or a taxi with other people. So we did take a couple of taxis, but that was only because our flight times were a little bit awkward and didn't match up with the bus schedules at the time. So we had really fair price drivers and we also included them inside of our Explore Nicaragua guide that's also linked below. And while the buses were affordable and really well connected, what I would say is it is a public bus and they get packed. I mean, if you get a seat, be sure to sit down and do not get up. <laughs> because when I thought that all the seats were done and they weren't picking anybody up, they just kept on picking people up. This was standing room only. I felt like I was in a concert. It was so many people packed up in that little bus. But it got us there, we were safe in one piece, and it was a cool experience to do it how the locals do it. So the next thing that we found surprising was the amazing cuisine. Not only the Nicaraguan food, but also the international options that they had as well. So while we were there, we didn't have one bad meal. And we ate street food, we ate at restaurants, and every single thing were hits. And what really surprised me was the amazing Mediterranean food. I mean, we've been to the Mediterranean, and this food is up to par with the Mediterranean food, and we were in Nicaragua. And a lot of these restaurants have amazing themes and ambiance, and it's great for your Instagram pictures, your travel videos, so you can do it for the gram. <laughs> So we have over 50 top rated restaurants included in our guide that's linked below. From all different regions in Nicaragua. So the next thing that surprised me, but I mean, it didn't really surprise me, is that drones are banned in Nicaragua. So before I go anywhere, I always look up the drone laws. And I saw a lot of conflicting information about drones being banned and drones not being banned. And especially watching YouTube videos, I saw a lot of drone videos in Nicaragua, so I was like, how did all these people get in their drones? 
but especially when two of my friends who traveled to Nicaragua two days before I got there and both of them had a drone and got their drones in without any problems, I knew I was gonna try to bring my drone in. Bad decision. <laughs> Because I thought there was a chance that my drone would be confiscated, I brought my older drone so my new one wouldn't get messed up. So I thought I was gonna get my drone in, but somebody was doing their job way too hard, and I learned my lesson that I shouldn't bring my drone in. So they took my drone at the border, confiscated it, and I acted like I didn't speak any Spanish. They gave me a little ticket that uh, basically said that they had my drone and they held on to it and they told me that when I return or when I depart, they'll give me my drone back. But I was a little uneasy because I didn't really know if they'd give me my drone back or where they'd keep my drone or if anybody would even be there because our flight was at two o'clock in the morning. So I wanted to make sure that I'd be able to get my drone back. And during our time in Nicaragua, I also found a person who was flying a drone at the volcano. So when I seen this, I was like, I gotta be the only person that got their drone confiscated because this is crazy. How everybody get their drone in but me. But when it was time to leave, I went to go pick up my drone. I showed the ticket and they brought us to this little secure room and they went to look for my drone. And let me tell y'all, my drone was not there. <laughs> Like, this is a nightmare. <laughs> the, and the guy wouldn't even let me go in the room to kind of look for it. He was just like, no, you can't be here because the cameras and whatever. So I was like, no, 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 no. Here's the ticket. My drone is there. Go find it. So he went and called somebody else. And long story short, the other person found the drone and gave it back to me. But he had to make sure that he walked me to my terminal gate and that I actually went on to the airport because I guess there's a lot of people who pick up their drones and just leave the airport and go back and fly their drones. So don't do that. So I'll give you guys that information and let you do what you want to do with that information about drones. Drones are banned in Nicaragua. <laughs> don't take your chances. So overall, we had an amazing time in Nicaragua. This one just might be my favorite country in Central America. We still have one more that we gotta visit, and it's Belize. But we can't wait to share all of this Nicaragua content with you guys. But thank you guys. You could be doing anything in the world, but you guys are sitting here watching this video with us. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.